effectively we are live. So uh, we'll keep going here. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the 10th episode of Beyond the Ridge. Uh, I will explain that last week we did number 11. So we're not totally going backwards. I just mislabeled the numbers. So that happens, you know, shit happens. Uh, Noga, hello, hello. Where are you? <laughs> I am here. I am here, Master. Um, everyone waits a week in the weekend, and there's no broadcast. Wait, what? Do you, what? Where? We we're here. We're here. Um, welcome everybody. So we are live on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at the same time. Um, Mr. Fly Amiro. That's is me. in the house. Who? Me? Yes. Hi. Yeah, you. Hello. Mr. Fly Amiro. There's the musician comments. extraordinaire. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I want to explain a couple of things that happened. Uh, one was the difference in numbers. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. So, technically, today's show will be number 10. So, we have at least all 11 shows showing up so we, 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 skip we, must, we accidentally went from went from episode 9 to episode 11 last week is that what happened yeah, that's what happened yeah yeah that's so my... we so we so this is a 10 this is the fill-in show <laughs> this fill-in show yeah. but i think you will enjoy it uh, mm. and another thing that happened was i gave the misinformation that mr fly amiro was not going to be with us this week and he is. We, we mistook that for next week that, as well. That was my bad. That was my bad. <laughs> no, I did it too. So I did it I, too. I won't be with you next week, but, you know, I mean, I'll be with you in spirit, but I, but, uh, but I, will, I will be off the air next week <clears throat> and uh, back at it after that. Very cool. Very cool. Um, we, have, uh, we have a wonderful guest today, <clears throat> Mr. Jimmy Carnelli. Uh, I think you will enjoy. We will uh, bring him in in a little while. Um, hello, Fly. Let's see. Let's say hello to a few fans. Yeah. We have. Uh, I can see Trish. Hello, Trish. Now let me go over to Instagram because everybody seems to be. Over. Mr. Tiziano Cavallari is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Titsy. <laughs> He says, Chow Ron, Chow, Fra, Chow Fly. Awesome. Uh, Miss Devin DeVasquez is in the house, yes. Kenny, Kenny Goodacre, hello. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter to everybody. And uh, 
Buona Pasqua a tutti. Buona Pasqua a tutti to all of our Italian friends. Tiziano. Happy Easter to you guys. I see. You're seeing people on Instagram right now, aren't you? Yes, I'm on the, the all the comments for Instagram. Maurizio, Cat Nipper 2 from Wisconsin. Hello. Happy Easter to you guys. Um, yeah, we have a, a lot of people. Ambra. Ambra. Hello. Hello. Annika. That's great. Very good. Very Happy good. Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yes. It's a lovely day. It is a lovely day. It's a beautiful and, day uh, here in New England. I'll tell you that. It's beautiful. It's kind of, we got a little bit of, <clears throat> a little bit of a rainy day here. Oh, yeah. In wow. Arizona, yeah. Arizona. It rained all night and still raining. But it's wow. nice. I like it when it rains here. Mm -hmm. um, so, Fly, what you been doing this week? Um... Oh my goodness, what have I been doing this week? Well, just uh, working on my music, on my, on my uh, online music and my online presence. You know, I have some work to do to update my website and, uh, and things like that and to get my music out there and, and onto uh, different places like Song Trust, Bandcamp, places where they, can, where they can sort of manage my monetization and stuff like that. It's like, it's one of those things that I, it's like there's, there's so many uh, I's to dot and T's to cross. There's so many little details of things to do. I haven't, I hadn't had time to do that when I was steadily on the road, you know? And yeah. So, so I've been, uh, I started out this year, uh, 2024, kind of like with, uh, on a jihad to, uh, to sort of uh, uh, working on some of those gaps in my in my business you know so okay that's kind of what i've been doing i'm concentrating on my on my original material getting it organized and and uh put into places and talking to publishers and whatnot you know there you go all right business that's cool the <laughs> well let's just start out here with speaking of original material oh yeah i've got uh a song that was on a, an old, older CD of mine, solo CD, that was written for uh, my kids, my kids. So, let's see if I can do this one. It's been a long time since I've done this song. I'm, it's always, I always, for some reason, I. I get inspired to do songs I haven't played in years on this on this broadcast, and I don't know well, why. Well, you know, I, I I think I know why. I do why? the same thing. I do the same. It's just because that's where the juice flows. You know what I mean? It's like you don't. I don't really know how this is going to come out, but it's like, but you know, exactly. It, it's like it's it's stimulating. It's a challenge. It's a challenge of that live. For some reason, this feels even more live than live. When that's we're in a right. concert, you've you've rehearsed that's, and planned for right. it, but yeah. it's like I'm not planning for a lot of stuff. I'm just letting it flow. Let's so see. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play a song that I've never played before. I haven't played live <laughs> in ten years in front of everyone in the world. Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah here we go. Ready? <laughs> Two, three. <go. laughs> All right. This song's called Butterfly. Nice. Written for the kids. <clears throat> When you were just a child Beautiful and wild Dreaming about The someone that you'd become You never saw the lines Wonder was in your eyes Listening to the beat of a different drum Look how the time has flown You're standing on your own 
ready to walk out into the great unknown. It's your world, take it all. You may run, you may fall, but be sure to taste it all. Butterfly. It seems like yesterday you were just a child at play, painting pictures, hanging them on the door. Now the things you are different indeed you found your heart and you know what it's beating for it's your world take it all you may run you may fall but be sure to taste it all Butterfly Tie your heart to a star Cause no dream is too far And you'll find out who you are Butterfly I didn't know that song. That's beautiful. Oh, God. Nice one. Man. And I, I played that for my kids years ago, and they started crying. <laughs> and, of course, when they started crying, so did I. <laughs> it's hard to sing a song when you're crying, I must say. I should probably sing a song myself. Yeah, let's do it. Oh. You notice this song had a drummer theme in that as well. Yes, that's right. Yes. Listening to the beat of a different drum. Is, is, didn't you tell me that that's a drum shirt that you're wearing there? Can you show that? It me? is. Look at that. It is. I wore this in honor of Jimmy. This is a drum shirt my wife gave me, and I thought, I, I'm going to wear my that's, drum shirt today because cool. we're going to have a drum theme today. <laughs> I want one of those shirts. <laughs> Um, anyway, <clears throat> I'll just play this song. <clears throat> what is this? This is a song. Um, a song. It's, it's a called, song, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. It's, it's, uh, it's called Evergreen. It's, a, it's not one of mine. It's, it's a song. It's, it's probably my favorite Roy Orbison song. You remember Roy? The great Roy I Orbison? do remember Roy, yes. This was a very lesser known Roy Orbison uh, song called Evergreen. And it goes like this. Sometimes. How's the sound there? Is that working? It sounds fantastic. Sometimes love will bloom in the springtime. Then like flowers in summer, love will grow. And fade away in the winter when the cold winds begin to blow when love is Be 
mine through laughter or through tears and let the whole world see our love will be evergreen through all the years when love is summer and winter too when love is evergreen hey, evergreen like my love for you Nice. The great Roy. So great nice. Roy. Thank you. Yeah. Really cool, Fly. Love it. I've never heard that Thank song. I, now I got to look up Roy's version, but that you're, uh, you you got to do that yourself, my friend. That, I do you got to record that one. I do that. Yeah. Oh, I have managed to record it. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a great song. It's very lesser known, but um, you know, the people who really were devoted to Roy, like I was growing up, Roy was Roy was a guy whose record I would go get the records, bring them home, put them on the, the the little spinner, and stand in front of the the mirror with a you know like a candle holder or something you know, and sing Roy Orbison. I just he was my hero. Did and, you put on um, the sunglasses? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't do the sunglasses. <laughs> um, I knew that he was uh, he was very myopic. You know, he was he was Mr. Magoo there without the glasses. And, yeah. Anyway, but but he was great. He was great. He did that song um, live at uh, at the Hampton Beach Casino, which is a venue here in the north uh, in the northeast of the New England area. Very cool. And uh, <coughs> back in, back in the '60s, and there was you couldn't hear a sound in the place. There was about a thousand, or maybe two thousand people there, and you couldn't hear a sound. You could hear a pin drop. It was, that was he, he just had that he had that velvety voice that, oh, that what a sound just here. was just mm -hmm. outstanding. So speaking of velvety voice, yeah. let's lead into our guest for the day, Mr. Jimmy Carnelli. Um, I'll bring him in, and then we'll introduce him. Here we go. Come on in, Jimmy. <clears throat> Hi. Here he is, Mr. Jimmy Hi. Carnelli. Everybody. Hello. How's everyone today? Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, my friend. We were talking about velvety voices and your name came up. And you just happened to be in my guest room. <laughs> my Go virtual figure. guest room. <laughs> so Jimmy Carnelli <clears throat> is uh, a singer, a drummer, a uh, a crooner style singer um <clears throat> and let's start with the story of meeting you at a a, a gig that we did called the the thalians it was a, a charity type of thing but the thalians is a very old established actors group that would meet at a hotel and uh, jimmy and his band happened to be playing there and me and my band cohort back then went and did a guest spot with Jimmy's band, using Jimmy's band. So Jimmy was up there singing, uh, crooning stuff and all. And, and <laughs> I, I, I think I asked him, so you, I said, you're a great, you go, you tell it, Jimmy, you tell it from your perspective. I, I, you know, it's, it's First of all, I you know I grew up and I and I loved Player and and I knew of Ron uh, obviously before he ever got there and so uh, here he comes and I and I know that they're going to sit and they're gonna play a couple of their hits, but I'm out there doing my thing in a tuxedo in front of the band and singing Sinatra and all that kind of stuff. And when it was uh, when it was pretty much over, Ron walked up to me and uh, he says, "Wow, man." 
you got a really nice voice. You're you're a crooner. That's that's unusual. I I I you know I don't sing like that. I said, well, Ron, you got a wonderful voice yourself. You know, doing my. He said, yeah, but I'm not a crooner. He says. He says, but you got a really nice crooning voice. I said, thank you. He says, do you, do you play another instrument? And I said, well, yes, I do. And I and I, he said, what? And I said, I'm a drummer. He said, yes, so is everybody. <laughs> and then and then he went, you mean like dang, chank, dang, chank, dang, you know, which I thought was like really interesting that he picked that because I was I studied under all world famous jazz drummers, and and so he literally picked that out. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, I was really flabbergasted and flattered by his compliment about my singing. But then right away he came up with, "Yes, yeah, sure you are," and I had been <laughs> playing for fifty years at that point or something like that. Okay, so the then I then I come to realize that not only was Jimmy a jazz drummer, trained jazz drummer, but he was a kick-ass rock and roll drummer as well, and. That's not always the case with some drummers. They they gravitate to a style sometimes. But Jimmy became the, uh, the kick-ass drummer for player. After that, that's uh, yeah. one of the segues you know, into the story. I remember and, there was a there, uh, uh, there was a time when when you could when you could tell like there would there would be a drummer in a rock band, but you could tell that he was a jazz drummer. You know he. He would play a certain way. He's trying to play rock, but he's coming from the jazz place, you know. Yeah, so you, yeah. If you can do what Jimmy, what Jimmy does, then you're a special kind of a talent, you know. It is. You know, it's because rock is such a different beast than than yeah. any other type of music. So. Yeah. I grew up in a musical house. My my brother is a studio guitarist, and so there was always a band in the basement. So I cut my teeth on on all old rock and roll, you know, from the Beatles yeah. to the Rolling Stones to everything. And the first tunes I learned was Leonard Skinner and things of that nature. Uh -huh. Then when I moved to California, I fell into this groove. I played for the Platters, the Coasters, the Drifters, Little Anthony, uh, Mike Panera from the Iron Butterfly, um, uh, Chuck Negron from Three Dog Night, Spencer Davis from Stevie Winwood, and I fell into this groove of playing all these oldie shows with all these people of all this music I grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely loved it because I, I love rock and roll. But I also went to college, was a music major, and studied under jazz drummers. And my one of my primary jazz drummers was Peter Erskine from Weather Report. And I spent years doing that and became a studied drummer so that I could read and play in a big band and so on and so forth. But I always loved rock and roll. When I got the opportunity to play in player and do that again, it was absolutely a joy. And Ron made it a joy. He really did. I, I, I got to oh, say, thank Ron you, my friend. Thank you. So let me segue here to your back to your singing. And I want to play a little uh, part of a clip. I won't get through all of it because I realize that uh, Fly and I were just talking how fast this hour goes. It goes it by just, quickly, yeah. It just goes by so fast. So uh, I, I tend to try and keep everything moving along so we can get to stuff and, and continue talking. But I want to play this little clip of Jimmy. Uh, it's a little promo thing that he did a while ago, and it show, kind of shows a little, bit of his, a little bit of his singing. So let me pull this up and get it here. And here we go, and boom. The summer wind came blowing in across the sea. It lingered there to touch your hair and walk with me. All summer long we sang a song And we strolled that golden sand To sweethearts and the summer wind Like painted kites those days and nights They went flying by The world was new beneath the blue Umbrella sky yeah. of then softer than a piper man One day it called to you I lost you too 
the summer wind. There we go. Cool, That's cool. cool. It's very cool. Nice. Thank you. This is what Jimmy was singing when I first met him, and so <laughs> it prompted so Jimmy, me to say do that. You, do you do this one, Jimmy? I would sacrifice anything, come what might, at the thought of having you near oh, in sure. spite of this warning voice. Hey, uh, under my night. skin. Yeah, yeah peach, I do, I would, I yeah, do yeah, them all. <laughs> don't you know, you little fool, you ain't mm. never going anyway. to... Yeah. I had a gig at a restaurant, an Italian restaurant that Sinatra used to go to for about five years. And uh, I used to love to do that. Ron came down one night, which was to the joy of everyone in, in the room. And, uh, and I used to just love doing that. And I started out, I didn't want them to know I was a drummer. Let me tell that. Let me tell it. Can I tell this real quick? So, go ahead. Okay, so I go into audition for this thing, and this guy blew me off for months. This guy, the owner of the restaurant, because they had a bunch of other guys, and and the guy that they had there for twenty five year, years passed away, and he was his name was Vic, and he was great. Anyway, so I go into to audition, and uh, he gets up there and he says, "We have a guest tonight. He's a guest vocalist." And uh, Jimmy, what what kind of do you sing? I said, "Well, I'm a crooner." And he said, uh, "So Jimmy's going to do some Sinatra, but we we don't really do that here anymore." That was my introduction. So I, I got it. Okay. So I, I, okay. Right. So, and this was called the Sinatra room. Okay. But, but the guy who did Sinatra passed away. So now they're doing Eric Clapton. So now, you know, like I'm a fly out of, you know, I'm a fly in the ointment. So I get up Beautiful. and I sing a couple of Sinatra tunes and I got a really nice response from the people in the restaurant and the guys in the band turn around. They all smile. I mean, nice job band takes a break drummer comes over to me hey man nice job hey danny thank you very much thank you for recommending me to Vito. i really appreciate it yeah jimmy do you play another instrument <laughs> <laughs> oh not again not a guy he actually he flashed run flashed through my mind it's like wow people love to ask me this question i said i said uh well I, um i stuttered i said i you, no, no, man. What, what, what do you, what do you, what do you play? And I went, um, <sighs> I'm, I'm a drummer. And he went, a drummer. Oh, uh, you mean like a professional drummer? And I went, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, have you ever played for anybody where anyone's ever heard of? Uh, <laughs> um, Here we go. Yeah, uh, who? And I said, I, I, I was the drummer for the legendary pianist Roger Williams for 15 years. What? Oh, well, man, you got to get up there and play. No, 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 no. No, I don't want to go up and play. No, Jimmy, you got to. I don't ever get to hear my own drums. They said, Danny, please don't make me go up there and do that. But he did. And once I got up and played, everybody in the band turned around and looked at me like, wait a minute. And the next thing I know, I was got the gig as a singer with a snare drum. And as soon as I didn't bring my snare drum, the owner came up to me and said, where's your, where's your snare drum? Uh, with all your brush shit you do. I loved it. I went, where, where is it? And I went, I, I, I said, you hired me as a singer. He says, yeah, I know, but I've been telling everybody about all that shit you play. And I went, what? And next thing I know, I'm... Got a snare drum, which developed into a snare drum and a hi hat, then a snare drum, a hi hat, and a bass drum. Next thing I know, I had a frickin' trio, and the owner of the restaurant was an upright bass player. Who knew? And <laughs> he joined my band. I didn't ask him to join my band, but he joined my band, and it stayed that way for the next four years. Yeah, End of Jimmy, story. Of, Funny. It seems like there's so many things that happened that seem to be out of your control. What is it? What's going I, on? I don't know what that is. I'm not really sure why that is. I think it's just God playing tricks on me. Uh, but, but the cool thing is, is no, really, honestly, I mean this, is Ron entered my life in the most interesting way. And, and then the, the end of the story was is that there was a, a soap opera show to be done with all of a, a bunch of soap opera stars, including Ron, that were going to come and do things. The drummer for the show was a friend of mine, dropped out. And how they found out I actually could play is his cohort there that he speaks of 
said, well, you know, your friend John Ferraro dropped out. You know anybody who can play a bunch of different styles and read music? And I went, yeah, me. And he went, <laughs> no. And I went, yeah, <laughs> me. And he went, no. I, man, yeah. I, so I went to the house, to the rehearsal. I sat down and played a variety of things from Bobby Darren to Adele and all kinds of stuff in between. And the two of them took me in the in the kitchen on a break and said, you know, every one of the drummers we use as a player plays for another band. But your 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 artist died, didn't he? And I went, Yeah, he did. He says, How would you like to be the drummer and player? And that's how I ended up in play. <laughs> So, Jimmy, before that, for 15 years, you were, in yeah. fact, the drummer for Roger Williams. Yes. And uh, I want to play a little clip. Let me bring it in here. This is the tail end of uh, a bit of a performance. But I caught it because you're obviously behind him. He, kept, he put you almost right next to him. He always During, did. In concert, yeah. I was three feet away from him, but at Carnegie Hall, they put me up on a riser, but he hated that. He didn't like the fact that I was that far from him, but I always had a view of the keyboard. No matter where the keyboard was, they would adjust me so that I could see all of his movement from, from all, of every octave. Yeah. So let me bring this in. This is Roger Williams at Carnegie Hall, and it's the tail end of one. We'll play a little bit of this. I thought this, and the drummer obviously in back is Jimmy. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> That's just incredible stuff. Now, Jimmy, I want to I want to let people. You've told me this story, and it was just so cute, of <laughs> playing for Roger for how many years? First of all, you started, and you you had long hair, you had the the mustache, the, you had all the stuff, and the audition went how? Well, it wasn't really an audition; it was an on the spot thing uh it was uh the long hair i had a ponytail and two black eyes at carnegie hall that was steinway's 150th anniversary i was sparring all week because as moron mentioned i spent years in the martial arts as a kempoist and i got beat up that the two days before i left for new york and so i had makeup on and a lot and the hair and the whole bit <clears throat> How I met Roger Williams was that I got a call from my friend while I was teaching on a Saturday. Jimmy, you remember Roger Williams, the Roger Williams? He said, yeah. He says, well, I've been playing for him for the last seven months, and we're going to Calgary on Monday to play with the, with the Calgary Symphony. Jim Neighbors was supposed to play, but he got sick, and they hired Roger Williams. I said, why are you telling me this? He said, because I want you to sub for his drummer. What? He says, well, I, 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 you said Monday, didn't you? He said, yeah. I said, it's Saturday. He, he goes, yeah, I know. He brought me a book the next day, flies, like this. 
And I opened it up and I my eyes welled up because when I looked down at it, I saw all these yellowed sheets that have been around for God knows years. And the drummers that played it was Irv Kotler, Sinatra's drummer, uh, Shelly Mann. No pressure, right? And okay, so I was unbelievably overwhelmed. That, but this was Sunday. Monday morning, I got on a plane, but when I got to the airport, I had never met Roger Williams. And my friend Ed, the guitar player, told Roger about me, but Roger had actually never laid eyes on me. Well, my hair was down to here, and I had a mustache and earrings and the whole trip. When Roger saw me at the airport, he walked over to Ed and he said, if this guy's not good, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed came and told me that. And it's like, oh, Jesus. OK, so we get to Canada. It was 39 below zero. Get to a rehearsal. I'd still never talked to Roger. I got to the rehearsal. I put up this music and oh, my God, I hold on the, by the seat of my pants. I was the first time I talked to Roger was coming out of the bathroom and he, I looked at him and I said, Mr. Williams, how, how am I doing? He says, I'm not, if I'm not yelling at you, you're doing fine. <laughs> that was my intro. Okay. The next rehearsal was at the big symphony hall with the 60 piece orchestra. I had auditioned for Gino Vanelli and made a mistake and I was never going to, and didn't get the gig and was never going to make this mistake again. So I saw all this tough stuff before their actual rehearsal. I called my own rehearsal. I never told you this part, Ron. Mm -hmm. I called my own rehearsal because I had this music spread all over the bed in my hotel room, looking at this stuff going, Oh my God. I, I mean, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. And Roger had me sitting three feet in front of him. That's it. He was next to the audience and I was right behind him. I was his, that was where the drummer sat. He can touch me. That's how close I was to him. And then he comes up there and starts. So I get to the rehearsal. I said, guys, there's some spots I am really unsure of because he had charts that segued where there was seven tunes and the drummer would set up each new song. I only had 48 hours. That, that was it. So I went over this stuff with the guys. When the rehearsal actually happened with the symphony, thank you, um, I did well. Uh, and Roger came to me after the co first concert at the symphony hall, and he said, Mr. Carnelli, I, you've caused me a problem. And I said, what, 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 would, what would that be, Mr. Williams? He said, you're clearly better than my drummer. But I'm a very loyal guy, and I won't let you take anyone's job from him. And I said, Mr. Williams, I came here with no intention of doing that. He said, you know, I want to play a lot more jazz and Dizzy Gillespie and stuff. He says, I've been trying to get my drummer to do that for six months. He said, I counted to 12, and you had it. Why? And I said, I studied jazz. I studied with jazz drummers. Eight months later, I put a band together for him of West Coast musicians, and the same five guys and myself stayed with him for 15 years until he passed in 211. And I never missed a gig. I, Jimmy, I, there's a, another story of when, I don't know how many years you were playing with him un, at the, until that moment. And then he asked you a question about another singer or how, how Jimmy, how does that song go? And you oh, sang, and yeah. you sang for him yeah, the first I, time. Yeah, he had yeah, never I, heard you sing. He never heard me sing, and I, then I became his announcer. So it, he uh, uh, he was doing Dizzy Gillespie's uh, Groovin' High. So he gets up in front of the audience, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do a Dizzy Gillespie song, and the Dizzy Gillespie song reminds me of the old Woody Woodpecker theme and also reminds me of that old tune, Whispering. Jimmy... 3,000 people, he'd make me get up and he'd go, Jimmy, you know that song, don't you? And I'd, whispering while you cuddle near me, whispering so no one can hear me. And I'd start to sing. 
And I could hear all the ladies in the front row go, oh, one of those things. <laughs> Roger used to tell me there was not a dry seat in the house. And so, <laughs> yeah, once that happened, um, he then uh, announced one day, you are now my announcer. So I used to announce him on stage Christmas time. I used to sing Christmas carols with the audience. And um, it was very unusual because Roger didn't have vocalists in his show. Uh, but you, but you, you stood out in a way that was not always favorable to your other bandmates in that no, group because, not, no. he, because he made you basically the leader of the band. And you were the, the young punk. The band, yeah. You were the I, young I, punk that came in, this long-haired yeah, kid. Right. I put the band together, so they were all my friends who he auditioned. But really, you know, from the very beginning, Roger and I just kind of hit it off. Matter of fact, the first night at the Carnegie Hall, I mean, the uh, the symphony in, in Calgary, Roger used to do... Um, even before the whispering thing, because I had been playing for him for a while, how he found out I sang was that first concert it, that he would do a, uh, a medley of tunes that the audience would put on, a, would yell out, and the road manager write on a piece of paper, and he would make up a medley on the spot. And so somebody from the audience, and it wasn't a plant, it was somebody from the audience yelled out, uh, the theme from the love boat. And Roger was like befuddled because he knew like thousands and thousands of songs. But the theme from the love boat went and he turned around and looked at the orchestra, which is the first face he sees is me because I'm the front next to the piano. But he's standing in front of the piano and he turns around and he goes up and he looks, he goes, orchestra, does anybody know the theme from the love boat? And... I have no freaking idea what made me do this. I stood up and went, love exciting and new. And he turned around and went, where did that come from? And the road manager, Dean, went, and he, Jimmy, was, was that you? And I was like, oh, my God. And he goes, Jimmy, please finish. <laughs> and now I was, I could feel rigor mortis starting to set in, but I actually got up and sang the next two verses of The Love Boat and got a rounding rouse of applause from the audience and the rest is history. This, this guy, Ron, this guy has obviously come a long way from just being a drummer, okay? Yeah, I, mean, I would say yes. When you, when you, when you, but you notice, when you, right, you notice he hasn't stopped drumming while he's talking. Right. That's yeah. right. All we he's hear is he's, he's drumming know, while he's talking. Yeah, but it's I like can't you know, help it. when you and I don't want to go, Jimmy. Stop playing the fucking drums while you're talking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Most, I'm sorry. Most drummers. You know the cool thing. You know the cool thing is though, when I hire a great drummer, when I sing out in front and I hire one of my pals who's a great drummer, man, do we have a good time? Because, you know, Sinclair will come out to me and goes, man, you are just swinging your ass off. And because I'm just singing, but I'm a drummer in my head. So the Sinatra style and the crooning voice is something I think you're born with. It's yeah. not something I learned. So, so people fly. come up to me and say, you sing just like Sinatra. And I go... N n not really no, no. and they go when you don't phrase anything like him and i go I i'm not trying to yeah that's right I'm fly what were you gonna say uh, huh? i was gonna say most drummers. i'm sorry fly most drummers uh when they start out if <clears throat> if they don't have a van they don't have a band <laughs> you know what i mean it's like if the, if the drummer he, he he's in the band because he's got the van you know he's he's got the drums he's got the van he drives around. but this guy went all the way all the way to Carnegie Hall. I'm going to feed you a straight line, uh, Jimmy. How do, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Uh, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Right. And I have the t I, fly, I have the T-shirt that I bought that night. I had oh. to have it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. D is that hey, what Jimmy. it says? Jimmy, what did the what did the drummer name his daughters? Oh, and no, a no. one, and a two. <laughs> That's funny. Very good, Ron. <laughs> 
I, <laughs> you know, but I laugh at people because sometimes when people walk to me, go, oh, yeah, you're just a drummer. And I go, can you sing? No. And I go, oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even yeah. say anything else. I just walk away. <laughs> hey, Fly, yep. you got another song in you? I don't know. I, I hadn't thought about it. Oh, I wanted to, you made me think of this other drummer story I wanted to tell you. I'm not, I'm not sure if you know this name. He's a gentleman that I get to work with quite a bit. Uh, his, uh, he lives out here near where I am in New England. <clears throat> his name is Dave Maddox. Yeah, Dave, I know who Dave Maddox is. Yeah, Dave Maddox. He's from England. He's one of the founding members of Fairport Convention. He's, a, he's quite a musician. He's a, very, he's a really, really well-rounded musician. He doesn't play drums. He, he plays keyboards and all this other stuff. And we were, do, we were doing a gig once, and, and uh, John Troy was on bass. And John Troy was with the John Hall Band. He had, uh, he had some history with Joe Cocker and with uh, Bonnie Raitt and all this other stuff. And he's a wonderful singer in his own right. And we were doing a song that John had never played before. And Dave Maddox is sitting on the drums, and he's calling out the chord changes to the bass player. <laughs> to, and you know so he's you know i saw the look at his face he's like whoa so he's playing you know he's doing the thing and then we finish the set and we go in the break and he says i've never played with a talking drum with a oh with a i've never played with a drummer who calls out chord changes it's like having a talking dog <laughs> i always whoa. thought that was a great quote it's like having a talking dog <laughs> anyway, a talking dog. <laughs> it's like talking having a talking dog. dog yes, <laughs> He's a, a, a drummer who calls out chord changes This is like having a talking dog, and so uh, we we named a, we named a band the Talking Dogs uh, after that. Uh, it, it, after that happened, um, what would I sing? Uh, what would I do? Uh, a song of my nobody own? Like, nobody like nobody liked me calling myself the leader of the band. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, there you go, though. Some. <laughs> You know, every once in a while, a Dave Clark comes along, you know? <laughs> uh, here's a, here's one of my songs. I might have sung this in, a, in an earlier episode back when we had some lesser sound. So I'm gonna Lesser sound time. <laughs> I've been lost Ever since the day I found you With square-cut diamonds wrapped around you And those sexy little things that you do Oh, baby, that's right That is hard Gazing on that soft white shoulder Fall just shy of talking bolder and saying just what I think of you. That's true. Out of the dark, the cold and the wet, you asked me for a light for my cool cigarette. I asked you where can I find. Since you winked at me and smiled that dirty smile and looked down, my soul's been headed up the river unto evil. I'm delivered by the Headed up the river 
Easy again. Both sexy little things. We're in three different times that you do. Ooh, ooh. Those sexy little things that you do to me, darling. Those sexy little things that you do. Yeah. That's enough of that. Thank you. Jimmy, you and I are funny. We were both trying to chime in thinking we're adding stuff your your beats were just off enough to be okay because of the late the latency thing happening right i'll be the judge of that <laughs> I just, I just, sorry no it wasn't <laughs> sorry fly I, I no, no it's funny it's funny, you, you it was funny possibly, because you can't do this in, in no it's it's really hard but your your beats were actually one two one two one two well, well, you kind of had triplets. that kind of yeah, thing going. Yeah. So we got three triplets. So I was getting one or one out of the three of them. So one of them, there. yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was great, Fly. That's, it. That's the key of a good drummer. He plays the odds. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice, Fly. Groovy. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, Very I wanted groovy. to put. I wanted to in, integ integrate something <clears throat> about this day. Um, presumably, what we're calling. Uh, Easter Sunday. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that think that are forwarding this movement of thought that April first is actually the first day of the year. Have you ever heard that? I have. April first is actually the official first day of the year, and. It was called April Fools or something because they kind of fooled people into believing it wasn't the beginning of the year, that January 1st was. Anyway, but there's a, there's a whole movement of thought and a lot of historical stuff that points to April 1st being the first day of the year. If we're going back to 13 months a year, 28 days a month, it all adds up. And this stuff has got a lot of historical uh, concrete evidence to back it up. Mm -hmm. which would make today Easter Sunday, New Year's Eve, technically, <laughs> wouldn't it? So I just wanted to throw that out as a little something well, to think New about. Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, that's right. <laughs> What's, um, what, what is the whole story behind, you know how October is actually oct is eight and December de deca is 10. Yeah. It used to be, there used to be 10 months in the year or something. Was that what it was? October used to be the eighth month and just, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. We, we used to have 13 months, technically. 13 yeah. months at 28 days each month. And it still adds up. There was one day for, for some leap year thing that still happened. But yeah. yeah, it still added up, 13 months. And they, they changed the cycle for a lot of different reasons. This is probably a discussion for another time. But uh, there's a lot of historical stuff around this, a lot of lunar theories around this and uh, changing the energy of things. So just think about it. But there's just enough months. days, though. There's still enough days, though. You get older the same exact way. <laughs> I know, really, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in fact, I think time is going faster and faster all the time. So I think we're in di a different reality this time. Man, can I say that this has been really a lot of fun. I, I, I really enjoy this. Fly, you're a very talented man. Thank you very he much. Is. You too, obviously. He is. Very versatile. Thank you. Ron, you, know? uh, you did Butterfly, and uh, it brought back a beautiful memory. Ron used to do that uh, when we were on the road, and um, I always loved that song. Um, I just think it's very, very touching. So nice job, Ronnie. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And... Uh, I want to say one thing because we're getting to the end here. Um, Fly cannot be with us next week. Yes, sir. Yes. But I'm adding to that quagmire of quandary, if mm -hmm. that makes sense, because I'm not going to be here next week either. Oh. I've, oh. I've decided to, uh, to take a one-week break because I have something that I really want to achieve 
and it falls right during the time from 11 to 5, uh, and I have to leave at 10. So it's a six-hour period of time that I cannot... Uh, and I decided this is the thing I wanted to do before I left to uh, go to Europe in a couple of months. So uh, I will not be here next week either. We will take a short week break. But Fly and I will definitely be back the week after that. So I just want to let everybody know. Okay, that works out. Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah. tomorrow. It's like... I'm off next week, but I'll be here the week after. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that will be whatever the show order technically is supposed to be. So I think yeah. we'll be at show 12 then. If I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I right. have to write this shit down now because I can't remember. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So any final, uh, any final words of just uh, stuff? Jimmy, well, it was one... About, yeah, we, we're about to get together again and... And uh, start. You you told people about. I didn't yet. We're um, yeah. I there's no reason not to. I'm putting together my uh, Ron Moss's player, and we're going to get together uh, in a couple of weeks uh, with Jimmy and our friend John Starr, and uh, Shim von Schreck. Shim von Trek uh, is going to help us uh, on base, and we're all going to get together and uh, start formulating what we're going to be doing for tours around the United States. And uh, yeah, it's all good. That's good. So that's that's in the formation as we speak. Looking forward to that. I lived in Arizona for for a while, so um, going back to Arizona, I get to see family, and I get to see Ron, who's family, and play do some playing again with some with i mean we get together and we do a lot of laughing i know that's good for your soul yes, we do <laughs> yeah i really enjoy it a lot jimmy um, is a a, a, a kick-ass literally martial artist he uh whenever we're on the road together we always feel very comfortable and uh body guarded with Jimmy around because nobody really knows this about him that he's quite the uh, the what's the dog that uh, <laughs> everybody uses as as a protection the not the bulldog Fido? the other no <laughs> Rot, the Rottweiler perhaps <laughs> Rottweiler or the or the, the pit the pit bull the pit bull yeah pit bull the, pit bull, the, pit bull, bull, yeah, the, the pit dome of it. Um, yeah, it's it's great. You see, Ron, you can go up. If somebody's giving somebody's giving you a hard time. You can you can step him beside you. Go, you point to Jimmy. And go, see that guy over there? You don't want to piss him off. You do not, <laughs> yeah, you do not want to piss him off. <laughs> and Jimmy will be well, eating Ron, a sandwich or something like just like what? And they'll Ron, go. Ron's like got it. a background in it as well. So we used to we used to laugh about it all the time. You know about about us being together. And every once in a while on the road, there was. One guy who who started staring him down one day, and I just kind of like kind of looked at Ron and looked at him like, "Am I gonna have to take this guy out?" You know, <laughs> he looks like he's about to attack Ron. I don't. Something's going on here. It was it was interesting. No, we situation. have a good time on the road. We've that's what Fly and I started this series doing. Basically, was telling road stories and funny yeah. road stories. Uh, if you've got a quick one, Jimmy, that comes to mind of anything in any context of just a funny road story. Oh, God. Anything quick? Uh, I'm sitting here looking at all on my screensaver of the whole tour with, uh, with Player coming up on my screensaver and I, all these great pictures. I I don't know that it, every, there was so many cool things that happened on that on that tour. I just uh, I I can't pick well except for the maybe the, the little video that we made in the dressing room. Do you remember that, Ron? <laughs> the little behind Which... the scenes that, that Devin made and you decided to take your shirt off <laughs> and you walked towards me <laughs> and you went What's the matter, Jimmy? Am I making you a little uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> and this shit's on film you know yeah yeah and it'll never be seen it will never be seen you never know Ron. <laughs> all right you guys thanks so much for joining us i want i i loved having all of our uh, our friends from around the world and we literally had a lot of friends from around the world in here with us 
Uh, I want to thank you guys. I remind you that uh, we will be back in two weeks, the week after next, uh, same time. And apparently Europe is now joined us in the time forward so it's technically six hours past um six hours past the east coast correct so the east yeah. coast time we we stick to the east coast time of two o'clock and europe will be six hours past that so whatever that comes out to be oh well okay. i just want to throw in real quickly i want to say thank you to everyone for being here and sharing your uh, your easter with us you know some of the some of you it's the evening some of you here in the east coast it's right smack dab in the middle of the afternoon and uh so thank you for that and also how great it was to, to meet you today jimmy and i think you're an amazing talent and very impressed with the with the, everything that you had to say it was a lot of fun Thank really you, great. Fly, and, yeah. and and back at you. I really enjoyed listening to you today, and oh, thank you. yeah. So I'm now I've now I've made another friend, and Ron, yeah. thank you for that. Thank you for that, because now sure, sure for you, I've made another friend. So that's that's always good. It's always a great thing. What if I tried to be an Easter bunny? <laughs> what if I tried? Wouldn't that be funny? If I was Easter Bunny on the floor, would you ask for more? I've tried to be an Easter Bunny today. I, I don't know. I'm just making this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We will be back in a couple weeks. More fun and stuff. And I'm sure we'll have Jimmy back on as well. At another time, and we look joy. forward. We look forward to seeing you all again. And bye bye for now. Keep bye your bye. head on straight. And whatever happens in the world, the next little while. And this is a story. This is a talk for another time. Whatever happens in the world in the next while, do not let fear control you. Do not go to the fear side of anything that happens in the next while. I'll leave it there. But remember just to live in love, live in light, and do not give fear any attention at all. Because there are some evil entities out there that feed on that energy. And if, if you want to try to be the Easter Bunny, you need to have the courage to try to be the Easter Bunny. Do not let fear stand in your way. I want to be the Easter Bunny. I want to be the Easter Bunny. Easter bunny. Easter bunny. I want to be the Easter Bunny. And wouldn't Easter bunny. that be funny? Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> Love you guys. Bye. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>